again and uh, the basis for so many of these uh, from Model A. No, no British wise there, the influence very much from the US. Mm. 70 years of the National Hot Rod Association was celebrating here and what a turnout. Where these vehicles have come from I have no idea but <laughs> well, certainly they've been... <laughs> garages and lockups, the length and breadth of the country, you know, every one of these will be absolutely treasured and and actually I, I, I pretty much guarantee if you go and talk to any owner of these cars that's a good half hour of your life because they will be able to tell you anything you want to know about the state of the art about how they built the car i pretty much guarantee every single one of these is built not bought fastest at yeah. the moment just to let you know how well Jensen's doing door opening that's five he's five seconds down so it might be one second for the door and four as Jensen <laughs> has to learn the circuit how to perform with no grip how to drive any time you can't just jump into these cars and be quick you've got to understand that's why he's been left in the car and it's one that is in the pit lane Rob Huff now up to four fastest that's him in the background in the cut seven livery car that he's sharing with Richard Mines with that pale turquoise strip across the the nose Richard Mines, I think, must have gone out first. Huffy now back at it. The uh, 2012 FIA World Touring Car Champion. And now back in World Touring Cars again this season. There's Mike Jordan, the familiar orange helmet of uh, Mike, dialing in the opposite lock out of the chicane. Not too much. You want to get it squared up and get that traction. And here comes Huff across the line. The car was fourth, now moves up to third. Quicker than the... the and Duma in the Thunderbird. There it is. It's as wide as most other cars on the grid are long. And this thing, again, you know, Bill Shepard has, has made a long career out of big V8 American machinery. Bill Shepard Mustang is the go-to place for Mustangs and for anything else big and brawny. And how you can make, frankly, you know, an aircraft carrier handle like a race car, I'm really not entirely sure, but there's a big, look at the size of that anti-roll bar, sway bar as the Americans call it. That's, that's like a two-inch solid anti-roll bar. But just in terms of the sheer size as the Jaguar goes through, the distance from behind Roman Dumas' shoulder to the tail of the car is long enough to fit an Austin A40. That yeah. is the size of the comparison. It's twice the length. But it's almost like one of those Brock Bank cartoons. We had a big American car with, with a Fiat 500 as, as the tender on the back <laughs> to be lowered down when you docked. Right, change at the top. Andrew yeah. Jordan's gone to the top and Dumas in the Thunderbird needs a bit of a move on. He's fallen to third place, but yeah. the top three cars covered by 0.16 of a second. It is a blink of an eye, so it's going to be super competitive. And in the background, it's lost an A40 sticking with the Thunderbird. Jaguar not pulling away, so it's really good omens for the for the race ahead. Yeah. Wow, absolutely fantastic. Maybe they've said it's something rather racy designed by Pininfarina and left it out. Oh, there. yes. Oh, yes, it's a beautiful Pininfarina. Oh, and he's imagining, yeah, 250 GT or something. A glorious, long, elegant, not some short, stumpy, sit-up-and-bear shopping car. I went to school in the back of one of those when I was very little. Yes. Not driven quite with as, as much aplomb, I'd hasten to add. Probably missed as many chicanes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but so, it's still that moment for, 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 for Jeb, as he's known in the business, just discovering where this circuit goes. Mm -hmm. I doubt he'd have bothered doing a track walk. He thinks he's hyper professional, I'll be on it in a couple of laps. Yeah. But it's much quicker than he'd have thought when you look at the track map. Uh, he's starting to get the tail to do what it needs to do, so job well done there. Well, but that's the joy of an A40. It's light, it's chuckable, it, it, you know, it, it's got an A-series engine, so it's got instant throttle response. It's got a very straightforward way of driving it. You point it and you drive it from the rear. So it is old school motoring. If you can drive anything rear wheel drive, you can definitely drive this. All right, it might bounce around a little more than, a, than the, you know, some of the Formula cars you were used to in your formative years. But that, you know, that ability to drive a rear drive car from, from the back wheels, that's exactly what you need. Oh, uh, now, Andy Prio appears to have a visibility issue. Well, hopefully he can remember it. He's, he's coming to the pits. That might be the hardest thing of all when you can't see. He's going to have to look at the side. So the BMW yeah. 700, great looking car, but we might see it with the bonnet down. Most certainly the man from Guernsey 
very much like some view. Yes. Hopefully the bonnet's not being damaged in that and it can be re-secured in uh, a suitable position. Well, if you have a bonnet that flaps up over the windscreen like that and bends itself, the easy way is to take it off, put it on the lawn and jump up and down on the inside of it. Don't ask me how I know. Almost every consumer manufacturer and some that a lot of people have never even heard of. Victorious in the Alton Park Gold Cup in torrential rain yeah. in the Ferguson. Four wheel the drive. What now? Exactly. But, you know, the, a one off, a four wheel drive uh, Formula One style car. Didn't race in, in Formula One Grand Prix, but raced in Formula One non championship races. But the P99 is there. It's low, it's wide, it's four wheel drive. There it won is. one race. There it is. But it's just going out yeah. of the screen. Right now, Martin Abram and Bruce Jones are your guides, although. We may be needing a dog and a stick to fumble our way around here uh, because we are deep in mini territory. This is practice for the John Whitmore Trophy. So John Whitmore, the uh, racing knight, uh, a former British saloon car champion. He won the 1961 British saloon car champion in a Morris Mini Minor, possibly better painted than the car you're looking at the moment. But Bruce Jones, we've got uh, getting on for 30 mini uh, Cooper S is nominally all attacking this track with great verve. But no one attacks it with more gusto than Nick Swift. This car made me laugh in the paddock. Yes, it looks so I painted it after dark with no light shining on the car. But when it sat there to spook out its rival, <laughs> under the tent had a massive rear wing on it. But that's mm. just Nick Swift through and through. Well, now you look at that and you think, OK, what he's done is asked one of his kids to design the colour scheme for the car and they've given, them, they've given them the outline and that's exactly what they've gone and done. And actually, Nick Swift, you know, who is the doyen really of mini racing here at Goodwood, he is running no fewer than 10 cars, including this one for himself and Andy Jordan. 24 cars are using Swift Tune engines. That is how well respected he is among the mini fraternity, not only here, but also wider among the, the mini racing fraternity. Well, you're quite right, towering over the top, going yeah. very well indeed, uh, as it would with Sam Hancock. But this 246 S Dino has had such success here. But again, that's one that requires really, really smooth driving style, and Sam Hancock is applying it accordingly. Tail coming out at the first part of match, but not too much, just enough to carry the speed. You don't want to scrub. This isn't a mini, after all. <laughs> That's very true. Right, top of the chart, still half a second to the good. Not as quick last time as he was previously, but uh, Roger Wills leading the way. Ollie Bryant, we saw him early in the session in another of the Lotus uh, 15, so small and light is the way to go. Purple second sector for Ollie Bryant, and that's been beaten in that sector by James Cottingham. So the second and third place cars, car number one, car number 18, are both on quicker laps. Sam Hancock is not, but he's stuck in traffic in car number four, the red Ferrari 246S. And he just gives a little uh, gesture of thanks to those who have allowed him to go by. John Hugenholtz in the pits, a name that's on everybody's tongues after the last couple of weeks in uh, Sanford. Now, the back of the trio of cars, it's the, it's the white and dark blue Jaguar. It's the E2A, wow. the sort of in-between, if you're sorry, we'll interrupt our service yeah. because James Cottingham has got top in the Tajero by uh, 0 0.045 of a second. Doesn't matter what the gap is, he's wow. got the advantage at the moment. And it was interesting, Roger Wills waved the driver of number four, Sam Hancock, in the Ferrari past him. I think mm -hmm. Roger felt he'd had his best lap, maybe cooling his tyres, ready to attack again, maybe one of the space. Three race favourites, Rob Huff, Andre Lotterer, uh, Jochen Mass in the Jaguar E-types, which are very nimble through the twisty bits, mm -hmm. but struggle a little bit in, in the straight line to keep up with, with the Cobras. Now, talking Cobras, the, the pale blue one, car number 21, that's uh, Alex Bunkham and his childhood friend Jensen Button. I think Jensen's getting the flavour of this meeting, his first time here competing. It's Alex on board at the yeah. moment, but uh, isn't it great? Childhood friends, Bunkham and Button family sort of grew up together, mucking around together as the fathers competed. And uh, it's just great to have them here. And I really think yeah. to come along, a Jensen will suddenly think, why have I missed this all these previous years? And now they let me play on the circuit. Uh, Where have I been? <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's all those years when you have had to dedicate every living second of your life to one thing, which is being better in a Formula One car. By the way, look at the timing screen being lit up. Is it Ollie Bryant or Darren Turner, who's at the wheel of car number one? That is the... Uh, AC Cobra, 
Well, for now, it's the 21, Alex Buncombe getting a little bit uh, blocked there yeah. by the Lister Jaguar, but uh, that Jaguar Coupe, he'll overtake it, but I think we're going to have a clean run. Oh, Brian to Turner going to second place. A bit is Harvey Stanley. He's sharing with James Cossing, Mr. 66, in behind, now being caught by the Minshaw Keen, the pale grey E-type. E Martin Brundle looking, looking. He's left a bit of a gap up the inside. Hasn't been grabbed by the driver of 33, but it will do as they blast out from Lavent. No, nope, Brundle's still got his nose in front as they start to consider braking if such a thing is required <laughs> at the Woodcote corner. Well, to a degree, but really only to unsettle rear, to get it rotating and, and to pitch the car in sideways. So last year's winners just starting to build a slender early advantage over the Brundle family car and the Minshaw Keen machine, which was very quick in the hands of John Minshaw at the beginning of the practice session, which was then red flag quite early on. Phil Keen didn't get to drive it, probably doesn't need to. Phil Keen's got enough experience. I think that is John Minshaw at the wheel, former part of a, a multiple front running uh, candidate in uh, British GTs over a number of years and of course scion of the Demon Tweaks empire and that's a great looking battle but it's allowing Harvey Stanley just to creep away further and further building his advantage he's now getting on for a second and a half clear well it's really enabling Stanley to escape because Martin Brunnell's looking to his left looking to his right where is the attack going to come from from the Minshaw and Keeney type and it looks like it's going to come down into Lavent. There may be a change of places. And then, Martin, let's have some short wheelbase Ferrari action. Going to St. Mary's. Just draw breath. David Hart, Nicky Pastorelli's car is at the front. And the one that tucked in behind. Car number 59, silver and yellow. Aunt, 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 uh, David Franklin and German racer Remo Lips, who I think is having his first run here mm. at Gooden. I bet he's hating every second. <laughs> well, that, that's a, a change there. Now the number one uh, Ferrari has moved up. That is... Uh, chasing down the Franklin Lips car, but this battle for second continues. A lap ago, it was John Minshaw in the third of these E-types, the uh, silver car with the black roof that had the fastest lap last time round, though. It is, it was the leader, Harvey Stanley, uh, who shares with James Cottingham. Now, here's a good exit from the chicane. John Minshaw's got alongside. Martin Brundle's got the inside line, but inside line and outside line are very different. You can keep the momentum up. You just have to be a bit brave. There will be no Verstappen-Hamilton incidents here. They will give each other survival room. And you can see Brundle taking a long look in the mirror there. He knows the caliber of John Minshaw, who was just fractionally ahead. The transponder was at least at the line. Brundle kept the inside line, though. Bruce Jones, I think this battle is going to continue. And actually, I don't think that Harvey Stanley is going to get any further away. In fact, they are closing down a little on the race leader, who appears to be getting a wee bit more sideways than the cars behind him. He certainly is. Maybe he's making the mistake of looking in his rear-view mirror. Maybe he's enjoying, enjoying the battle the behind, <laughs> enjoying too much. Just sort of backing off a little bit of smoke coming out of the back mm -hmm. of Martin Brundle's E-Type. That's number four as he gets the power down out of Lavin. But the power seems to go back down better, both out of Lavin mm -hmm. for the 33 Jaguar with Minter on board, and particularly out of the chicane at the end of the lap. So that is why Martin Brundle has to protect and defend so hard into Madrid, the first corner of the following lap. That car fought its way past Martin Brundle for what was then second place. Now now has the lead of the race and last year's winners are still in the hunt they're in third place 12.4 seconds back and unless there's mechanical frailty there's no one else in this race those three are going to contest it the 33 the number four and the number 66 e types but behind lots of intrigue and in fact the delayed number three e type now up to six it's got by the 250 short wheelbase car number